Our world, my friends, stands at a fork in the road. One no less significant than when the United Nations was formed in 1945. But then, the majority of our countries here did not exist. We exist now. The difference is we want to exist 100 years from now. Two degrees is a death sentence for the people of Antigua and Barbuda, for the people of the Maldives, for the people of Dominica and Fiji, for the people of Kenya and Mozambique, and yes, for the people of Samoa and Barbados. And we've come here today to say, try harder, try harder, because our people, the climate army, the world, the planet, needs our actions now. Climate change is the issue of our lifetime. And it's important, therefore, that we have people who can not only expose the causes and the impacts of climate change, but also explain how we can tackle it. That's why it's vital that we have independent media worldwide to report on the issue of climate change, and why it's especially important that we have people from marginalised communities who are most impacted giving voice to those marginalised communities. My name is Maria Monica Monsalve. I'm a journalist from El Espectador, Colombia. My name is Sibi Arasu. I'm an independent journalist from Bangalore, India. My name is Ochi. Uh, I'm a journalist from Indonesia. My name is Bhaktagut. I'm from Kyrgyzstan. I'm a journalist for Azatov Media. I'm Gaya Rubiko. I am a journalist based in the Philippines. My name is Shamsuddin Ilyas. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm Aida Del Fresh, a French and Tunisian journalist working for the uh, independent media in Tunis, uh, in Kifaga. My name is Isaac, Isaac Agnew. I write for Business Day. It's a newspaper based in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Jessica Mais. I'm from Fullerton Paul, Brazil. Mashika Pardikar. I'm a freelance reporter from Bangalore. Hey, my name is Dan Kaburu. I'm a TV journalist from Kenya. I'm Adriana Freitas. I'm from Brazil. My name is Alberto Pons, I'm a journalist with the Canon Insolency. My name is Anastasia Zagorucic, I'm from Ukraine. I'm Disha Shetty, I'm a science journalist from India. Chris Pokil from Nepal. My name is Frederick Nijer, I'm the founder of the Journalists Africa. I'm Pia Renata, I'm a journalist from Rappler, um, a news website based in the Philippines. My name is Alfreda Kevin Alerici, I'm a journalist, I work for People's Gazette in Nigeria. My name is Ilim Nan. I'm from Indonesia. I work for Compass.com. Hi, I'm Nat. I am a writer with uh, DH Malaysia. Hello, my name is Mohammed Daoud Khan and I'm from Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan. COP is very important to the whole world and even more crucially to the entire developing world. There's nobody who's now free of the impacts of climate change in any part of the world. That's why any attempt to talk and discuss and come up with a strategy on how to combat climate change becomes crucial for all of us. Politicians tend to move faster when they're under public pressure, but how do the public form their opinions? Where do they get their information from? You know, we obviously in the media, we like to think that that responsible media plays a big part in, in raising climate awareness, in communicating complicated economics and science and, and the social impacts of, of climate. Um, but is it true? And, and if it is, how do we ensure that journalists themselves uh, are equipped to deal with these complexities? One of the main issues is uh, women back home, they are, they are being neglected. They are not considered. They are left out in decision making. So we want uh, commitments from government where they are going to put women into the negotiating process during the decision making process so that they become part of it. Because you find that uh, the most vulnerable people to climate change, you'll find that they are women. At COP26, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, sticky issues here. The, the real issue is not in the four corners of this venue. It is 
in our communities, in, a, in our countries. So I think we need to push more on, for example, on finance, uh, mitigation, adaptation issues, and of course, highlight the human face of climate change. I see a big gap uh, in not only journalism, but also in the policy arena. Um, that information is the key for us to to cooperate, to understand, to build the trust and the confidence about tackling climate um, action, uh, climate change, and act together. That's the reason I come back to journalism. What I've ob observed uh, over the last few years is there's a lot more interest in, in, in climate stories. In the last few years, we're getting a lot more requests from journalists themselves. They want more training. They want to know more about climate change. They want to know where to get data. And I I'm also seeing that uh, journalists are asking their editors their bosses uh, to, to set up, to provide the resources they need to do more climate stories, um, to, to assign them as environment beat reporter. And um, I, I see this shift. Being part of CCMP was a game-changing movement as part of my career. Uh, it was a really big deal for me. I mean, I got the chance to be in this big, massive event, which was really overwhelming on the first few days. After actually being there, I started new programs, new projects. I engaged with new stakeholders and other reporters from around the globe. Uh, it was a really big, big moment in my career. I'm really so happy that I got into this fellowship. I think that this way of, of covering the COP is the only way to cover a COP. When you're constantly exposed and interacting with um, journalists from other countries and with people who've been watching these conferences for, for years, even decades, then you get um, much richer information. I, I found that the video reports I've done, the in-depth stories I've done um, are much better in quality than it otherwise might have been if I had just gone here by myself. This fellowship is very good for me because number one, it has exposed me to other parts of the world. It has helped me to come also to meet journalists from other places. I have learned a lot of jargons about climate, a lot of uh, acronyms, and uh, I'm learning the climate change and connecting the climate stories back to my home country, to my listeners. This fellowship has been really important for me because even if I have been reporting and writing on environment and climate change for almost six years, I have never had access to these conversations which are really you know, intricate and they have this technical language. And here you have trainers, you can ask them questions, what is going on? And I think that without that guide, I wouldn't be able to you know, write or publish what I'm doing right now. Being on this fellowship has allowed me to come to what is the biggest climate negotiation conference in the world uh, and talk about an issue that's so close to me, which is public health. This fellowship is a great opportunity to bridge the gap between um, this very important climate summit and the Filipinos um, from ordinary people to policymakers. This fellowship has really, really helped me. It has broadened my scope and also given me the opportunities to meet uh, other journalists. So this fellowship has been very helpful for me because I mainly write about finance, business and technology. But this opportunity has helped me learn a lot about climate policy and, and, and um, environmental issues from my fellows who are really amazing environmental journalists. What I found most uh, enriching was that I, I was able to talk to people from all over the world that I certainly wouldn't be able to reach as easily if I were in Brazil, so I can bring a broader perspective to our listeners. To have an opportunity to meet the highest level of uh, global leaders and scientists and delegates and have uh, uh, unfettered access more or less to them is amazing because then I can directly connect what is happening on the ground to what the leaders of our generation are trying to do about it. A very important story for journalists to follow is what are the near-term actions that the government has taken within the, the political leader's current term of office? What are they doing today to get the country on track? It's going to be really important for journalists to you know, follow what their governments have committed to, make sure they live up to those commitments, hold governments accountable. Uh, so not just during the COP, but really the real work begins after the summit.